Hello class, uh, this video is going to help you learn a few of the auto sketchbook techniques to reproduce um, a Kandinsky painting and then create your own Kandinsky light painting on some um, music that we will be listening to in our class. On the right hand side, uh, this is where I have my layers and also my colors and my color wheel. On the top, uh, we have, um, oops, that eliminates the tools. Um, we're going to be using several of these, including um, the draw styles tool, which draws basically straight lines and geometric shapes. Uh, we'll be using the paint bucket, which uh, does both fill and gradations. And the one next to it, uh, we'll be using, uh, this is a transformation tool. We'll be using the nudge tool within the transformation tool. On the left-hand side, we have lots of um, uh, drawing tools. We will be using the technical pen tool, the airbrush tool. And we'll be also using the eraser. I'm going to use the eraser that's on the bottom, the textured eraser tool. Um, similar to the airbrush tool, just so you know, is the watercolor. Um, again, so we'll probably be using that one as well. Airbrush watercolor. Uh, the difference is the watercolor is a little bit uh, more uneven. Airbrush more even. Okay. So let's first find a Kandinsky painting that we're going to use as a reference. I'm going to go up to, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth one over looks like a little landscape with a plus. That takes me. And I've already, prior to doing this, have found the photo or the artwork that I'm going to be using as my reference. I'm going to enlarge this just for demonstration purposes. When you're um, tracing it or copying it, you're going to do that as well. Uh, sometimes what I will do if I have something as a reference, I will just make it smaller and leave it off to the side. So I'm literally referring to it. Uh, I'm not necessarily copying it. Uh, but this one, again, because it's our practice one, we're going to make it a little bit larger and literally trace right over it. When I have it where I want it, I'm going to press done. And you can see that it appears in a layer on the right hand side. Um, I'm going to also add another photo. Um, and I picked this particular Kandinsky because of the background. Um, it has a very painterly quality to it. So again, some of the, I don't know which one you're going to find, which one you're going to get fine to, um, to um, copy. But again, I'm just going to show you some of his different techniques that he has in there. And again, that also shows up on my layers. On each layer, there is a little eyeball um, in the upper left-hand corner. If I click that, the image uh, disappears. It's still there. I see it. I don't see it. Um, on the layer I'm using, I'm going to change the opacity because I want to see what I'm drawing, yet I want to use this as a reference. So I'm I am putting it a little bit beyond the halfway point. Again, it depends upon your reference, but I want to make sure I see everything that is there. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to start a new layer. And on this layer, I'm going to be putting all of my lines. Um, since we just finished a lesson with lines, this is what I recommend to do first. We'll do the lines first, then the shapes than the color or shapes and colors together, but certainly let's do the lines first. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to do this kind of checkerboard shape. Uh, it's very similar to the Modrian, so uh, this one will be a little bit easier to do. Go up to my Draw Styles tool, up to my line. And again, I'm even zooming in. Um, I have a stylus, but if you have a just a finger, that's fine as well. Oh. I wasn't paying attention. I'm not, I'm on the wrong tool. So let's go to the back arrow, go to my correct tool, which is the technical pen tool. I also want to make sure I have the correct color. 
I'm not doing the black black. I'm actually doing the one above it. Um, but either one of those is good to use. And I'm going to be drawing my line. Now, I may my, I made the line thickness. I'm going to make it. I'm going to actually going to make it a little bit less. Let me go back. I'm going to. I'm going to make my line thickness around three or four. Let's make it four. Okay. Um, I like four because I can see it. Sometimes if the line's too skinny, it's hard for me to see it. All right. So first, let me draw in all these horizontal lines. Oops, too long. And again, if you don't like what you do are doing, just change it right then and there. I mean, that one's a little crooked. I'm going to leave it. Um, and again, I can twist this around in any way that helps me kind of see it a little bit better or work on it a little bit easier. So um, Kandinsky does have a lot of these grids within his um, paintings, and that is because he was influenced by music. If any of you do play a musical instrument, you'll know that um, if you look at written, you know, the written, written score or the music, you have um, the musical score. All right, that one I'm going to redo because it's too crooked. Backwards arrow. And again, the more that you zoom in, the more accurate you'll be. That is key to being a graphic designer, animator, um, any, any artist in the commercial world who uses any of these digital tools. Oops, that one looks not quite straight. I'm not even sure there's one on the ends there, but oops. If you're pinching and you're and you're only pinching with one finger, or one finger hits it accidentally, it does make a mark. So make sure that you fix that. Before I fill that in with color, I'm going to do a couple more lines. I'm going to do this squiggly line here. So I'm going to, oh, wait a minute. This is, whoops, wrong one. All right. That's, uh, I'm not doing that one because, uh, okay. I can, oh, right now I'm on my straight line tool, so I'm going to be just doing straight lines. And again, you, this one you could make a little thinner if this were yours. Again, I'm just doing demonstration purposes and trying to get you to see a variety of different things. So again, all my straight lines, and there's a whole bunch of them, can be drawn with that tool. Curve lines, I'm going to get, I'm going to get out of that tool. And then I'm going to go to the pen tool. This is how I'm going to draw my curved lines. I have two curved lines there. And again, zooming in so I can kind of see them pretty accurately. And I'm just tracing right over them. Um, it is best to do them in one clean sweep. Uh, don't do this. Okay. Again, you want to do one clean, one clean sweep. You can see that actually is made up of a variety of different lines. So straight lines, curved lines. Let's do more curved lines here. Again, this one I'm going to follow the shape. Okay. Now I have what looks like kind of an open shape here. I'm going to go up to my fill and press that in there and see if I'm happy with that. I can then go back a little bit and perfect it if I want to. But again, that's, that is a way to 
kind of get that thin and thickness. And you can see that those lines do, do show a little bit. Okay, zoom out. Okay, so let's see what I've done so far. Oops. That's what I've done so far. Okay, so often when I do that, then I'm going to zoom in, and I'm not really that crazy about that transition. So without my image there, just me, I'm going to fix that or modify that. I'm going to make my pen tool slightly smaller so that I have a little bit more control over it. And then I'm going to perfect it. And again, revision is part of the creative process. So if I tell you to go back and revise something it's not a bad thing it's a creative thing all right so I don't know if you saw what I did I'm, I'm a little bit happier with that again I have my pen tool I've narrowed it down a little bit so I have a little bit more control over it and I'm zooming in that also gives me control I can see I see all the um, lines that I can fix and repair all right. All right. Okay, once I'm happy with that, then bring back my lines. Okay. And there's many more to do. Again, this is for demonstration purposes, so I'm not going to be doing everything, just kind of showing you some basic concepts. Once I have uh, once I have an enclosed shape, then I can fill it in. So for example, in my checkerboard, I have quite a few uh, enclosed shapes that I can fill. I know that these, although they look gray, I happen to know that they are black. So I'm going to make sure I've got our dark. I'm going to make sure I have my dark color right there. I'm going to go to my paint bucket, fill, and then I'm just going to tap those ones that, oops, that was my finger. Okay, so those are the ones that are black. Now I'm going to put in the other colors. Okay. So how I put the other colors in is I go up to that circle up there. I clicked on the black circle up the top. It shows me a color wheel. Let's say I want to do this green color. I know it's in the green family, so I kind of move my circle there. I know it's a light green, so I move it up to my light. I like working within the color wheel. You can also use the bars that go across like that. I don't, that's, I, I don't know. The color wheel works a little bit easier for me, um, but either way is fine. Down the bottom on that particular grid, there's a whole bunch of numbers. So as an artist, if I was doing something and I wanted to repeat it and repeat a color, I would keep a written track of all the, of those particular numbers. Um, it says um, H, S, uh, L stands for U is the, so this is all about color. U, um, which is the name of the color, green, for example. Uh, S stands for saturation or intensity, how, how bright or pure it is. And L stands for light, how light or dark it is. So that is also a scale. Um, I'm going to move that a little bit till it matches that. And again, I do have this in a slight gradation. Um, so, and then I'm going to tap on those colors there. Okay. And next I'm going to do this beigey color. Again, tap on my colors. Um, that's a little, th now this, you'll get better at doing this. That is actually in the orange family believe it or not. And it's also life out. So I just tapped on the orange that was in the same spot for the green, but notice it came out pretty close to that. And then, um, I think that's all, maybe is there red? I think there's, oh, that's a blue one too. Let's do the blue. Oh, I did the blue. Let's do that one blue. Okay. 
And let's see what we have done so far. Every once in a while, take out your um, image so you can kind of see what you've done so far. Okay, so again, right now, I'm recommending that you put most of your lines on its own, its own layer. All right, I'm going to move now on to um, the circles. And I'm going to put the circles on their own layer. And on this particular piece, like when I get to the right hand side, you will need to pay attention to what is on top of below uh, and some circles now. I'm going to do these three circles right here. Let's do the yellow one first. I'm going to look at the thickness of my line. So even though I am using um, up here the, the tools that are showing the circle and the square and the line, how thick that line is, is is related to my pen tool or whatever tool I'm using here. So I'm going to make this um, probably three. It's a little bit th thinner. And I'm going to go to my circle. It's hard for you to see, but there is a kind of a dotted line that kind of shows that. Uh, right now I was on blue, so it showed as blue. Um, so I'm going to redo that with black. Now, uh, sometimes you have to do it more than once. Again, revision is part of the creative process. All right. So once I have drawn that, I did not draw it exactly on that circle. And now I'm going to show you how to put it or nudge it on there. Going up to the transform tool, second one over is nudge. I'm going to grab it. You'll see that little thing right there. And it allows me to move it and place it where I want it. Okay. That's the nudge tool. That tool is going to come in very handy. So that's where that one is. When I'm done and it's in the spot I like it, I'm going to press done. Color, we already know how to do the color. We go up to our colors. Look for, uh, that's in the yellow family, but it's a light yellow. I'm going to make it a little bit. Yellows are a little bit, yellow is the one color I find that's a little hard to get on the computer as bright and as nice as I like it, but okay, there you go. So again, I'm looking at this little circle. I'm happy with it. Whoops, on the correct light. Oh, no. Okay, the reason that it filled in is because I was not on the circle layer. I was on the layer above it, and so it basically filled everything in. So now I'm on my circle layer, and I'm just going to fill the circle in. And match the color as close as you can um, on there. So those are all the solid circles. Anything that looks like a solid circle, I'm going to do on this layer. The fuzzy circles, I'm going to do on a separate layer. So let me do two more circles just so you get the idea. These circles do not have a line around them. I'm going to do the purple circle. So I can also draw with my color first. Go, so I have my color, got my circle tool, draw my shape in there. Uh, and try to get it sometimes. And then I'm going to fill. Then I'm going to nudge. And again, not quite the same, but I'm okay. Try to get it as close as you can. I don't want you to go crazy. Um, I'm also going to do, I'm going to do, um, okay, so for, so there, see these three circles, we've got a purple circle, a black circle, circle, and a red circle. They have to be on three different layers. Um, in, or yes, they have to be in three different layers because one is on top of the other. So I'm going to, what's what layer are we on here? That's what I'm saying, do all your solid layers, or yes, yeah, solid circles first. So I'm going to do... I feel like it's close enough. All right. I'm now going to do um, the airbrush circles. 
So I'm new layer. Airbrush. Color. Okay, so I want to make sure everything's set. I'm going to do the blue one first. And I'm actually just going to put it o over everything there for right now. Then I'm also going to do a little bit of the purple around the outer edge as well. And I'm going to move that layer. Well, before I do that, I'm going to do also do the red layer up high because that's also airbrushed. Airbrush. Color. Um, airbrush around it. Let's see what we have so far. Okay, now I'm going to take that that layer and put it underneath those layers. And I think what I'm going to do also is I'll just do that big black circle as well. Just so that's behind here. And again, this is this demonstration really is about learning the tools, learning where to use the tools, uh, layering. Layering is going to be a big part of uh, this process. Okay, I've got my own layer going there. I'm going to do a circle. Sometimes I have to zoom in to kind of see how that... Oh, Let's do uh, black. Oh, wrong tool. I should be on the technical pen tool. Whenever, whenever you're doing something and it doesn't quite, again, make sure pen tool, my color's right. Make sure you have everything kind of set up. Um, the number one, I mean, even I sometimes make that mistake is that, um, let me kind of just draw this first before I start talking. Because it's on its own layer. I probably could nudge it. Fill. Nudge. And it's on its own layer. So I can nudge it. And again, make it many, make as many layers as you need to, especially again, so you'll, things will get kind of complicated. So far, that's what I have. I'm going to do one more thing, and then I'm go then you're going to go on your own. And the background, I'm going to put that on its own layer, and I am going to make a rectangle. Whoops, rectangle. I'm going to make it slightly larger than the piece. And now I'm going to go up to my colors. Um, and I'm going to go, it has, it's a very, very, I see a very, very light yellow. Uh, there's a couple of ways I can do this. Um, let me see. I, I was going to fill it in, but I think what I'm going to do instead is put in um, put in the background. Let me just yes, put in the background with the airbrush tool. Okay. So right now that layer is up high here. I I'm going to just draw it in, and then I'm going to move the layer a little bit lower. So I have my airbrush tool. I have my color yellow. And I'm just going to do, because I know it's a little bit on the uneven side. So I'm going to do a little bit of that. I can also make my brush pretty, pretty large. The larger I break, make the brush, the more 
uh, area it covers. It can stay in a place longer if I feel like it needs to be a little bit um, darker. Um, I can also add, I'm also going to add, um, it's right here, kind of a lighter white color in areas, just where I want it. So I have white. Again, there's my little airbrush tool. Now the one thing that is happening here is that um, I will need to go, because airbrush kind of spreads out because it's air, um, I am going to have to zoom in a little bit and clean it up. So when I'm cleaning it up, making sure my brush is pretty small, I'm going to try to clean that up. So Anything that went beyond the line we're just going to clean that up. Again, zoom in and clean it up. This is the eraser tool. Again, the key is, oops. Key is to make your pen pretty small. I'm just going to do up there just for demonstration purposes. I don't want to erase the line. I just want to erase the airbrush that went outside the line. Okay, you can see that that's a much cleaner edge. Okay. okay. Um, and I'm going to take that. I'm going to move that. Since it's my background, I'm going to move it as low as I possibly can. I'm going to move this one down. We haven't used that one. All right, so that's what I have done so far. All right, well, I've given you a lot of information. The most important thing is to practice. Learn your tools. Understand layers. Start with the lines because that's going to be the easiest. Then understand the circles and the solid shapes. Uh, also, the airbrush tool. Okay, take your time. All right. See you soon.